podcast was probably one of the more popular ones we've done yet. Oh, and there, and it was slightly early on too. So now you've really it was in the middle. So now you've really ramped it up. So yeah, when was it? Maybe a year ago. It was during COVID. Yeah, but I might have been at was, the start of COVID. COVID's yeah. been going on a very long time now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was pre me. Like I don't. It was. You had definitely done yeah, it before I, I came wrong. I did it in my spare bedroom. I remember that much. Yeah. So it was probably better. I remember listening to it. I was in Richmond, Virginia, and it was when all the Black Lives Matter stuff happened. So all the all this, I remember ran, running by all the statues, and all the statues were vandalized. That's what I have time stamped in my head while listening to your podcast. You've got weird files in your brain. I That's do. strange. <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's strange. <laughs> uh, and we have a live studio audience. Uh, Missy and Trevor Sherber are also here. Mm-hmm. We'll get them on the podcast one of these days. They don't. They haven't done a podcast. Uh, not together. That's rude. I know, especially from Trevor, because he has some stuff to say. (laughs) (laughs) And the people want to hear it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm, I reckon the next one, he's right here right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have time for five podcasts in a day? Uh, I don't know if if Alex has the uh, mental bandwidth for five podcasts (laughs) in a day. Yeah, this is the third one today. Uh, So you're a a, a John Deere customer now. here, Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Yes. I'm a John Deere customer now and an RDO customer right now. Yes. Uh-huh. So we've bought three of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's it. And I've got a secondhand grader, but I bought three new tractors from them currently. What do you, you've cat, you've Cabelco. Mm-hmm. What's that white and black one? Hydromech. Hydromech. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give him a little bit of a plug right now out of all of the machines, out of every single machine that's had the spanner put on it the least. Really? Yeah. And it probably gets treated the worst. Holds together. Really? Yep. And if you're my one track rep, whoever that is right now, I'd like a new jumper for that little plug right there. They'll there. listen. I would. I'll take one too. But, uh, yeah, nice and a sticker. But uh, they, yeah. but it it doesn't break down. They're built tough. Really? Yeah, the white ones built tough. Or yeah. they aren't they built in Turkey or something? Turkey. Like that? Who would have thought that they built them tough? Yeah, I'm, I have jokes right now, but I'm not going to say them. <laughs> I'm not going to say them. But yeah, uh, good machine. So I have got Cabelco, uh, John Deere, Caterpillar, and one Hydromech. So you got a little bit of everything. Yeah, I'm a rainbow man. <laughs> mostly excavators. Yeah, mostly excavators, yeah. Bulldozer here and there. And, Can you explain, and like you were, you were talking about yesterday, the nature of your work? Okay. Basically just dig holes. Put the dirt in the truck and truck it away, yeah. I don't want to dig long, narrow holes. You might know them as trenches. Sure. I don't want to put in utilities, no retaining walls. Don't want to really bring in crush rock. I just want to dig a hole and truck the dirt. So that's what we do best. But you're always a subcontractor to somebody else. I want to be the subcontractor to somebody else. Why is that? Uh, Because the management that you have to have in the background, project managers, engineers, QS, whatever it might be, is more arduous for uh, for the management of the company. You have to have a lot more. When If we put that on to someone else and we help facilitate digging the holes, then all we have to do is dig a hole. It, It... Keep it simple, stupid. Don't. That's one of our uh, core values. Is it really? Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be difficult. Digging holes isn't difficult. Or the 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 these projects are they pretty quick? So it, you do have to the, bid a lot. Uh, we but the bidding process is easier because of how we've set it up as well. So yeah. you're not trying to capture more of the scope. You're not trying to capture the pipes in the ground. You're yeah, not trying yeah, to capture. Yeah, yeah concrete volumes or tying off rebar, what you're actually trying to capture is digging the hole. And because you do the same thing over and over and over again, then it gets very easy to price. But from a schedule standpoint, you're somewhat at the mercy of the Absolutely. other subcontractors. Absolutely. You've hit the nail on the head. So there's a couple of problems with my business model, uh, which is uh, scheduling is very difficult. You don't have control over the project as much as you would like. If, you took, if I took on more scope, which we could do, um, I would be able to run it how I wanted rather than um, having someone else run it and pull me in, pull me out, pull me in, push me in, whatever, it, however you want to say it, you know, I'll have 10 guys tomorrow. I'll have no guys the next day. Yeah, because you'll get a call and they'll want you there tomorrow. Absolutely. 
and you have to figure that out. Yes. Yes. Or 25 trucks tomorrow, no trucks the next day, 50 trucks the, the day after. Where do you put the 25 trucks afterwards? On the day that they want done. Do, do you keep the consistent, consistent trucks yes. pretty much? So yes. they all work for Starbucks somewhere, yeah. but you're having to dispatch them on whatever different sites. Mm -hmm. Which means that it's very difficult to keep it consistent. So we run, let's say, a consistent 80 to 100. And then on top of that and below that, so my excavation company in the background helps support the trucking company but it means that on a day that uh, the, the trucking orders are light, so you might have 100 external customers or 100 trucks for external customers, so you have to send them 100, which leaves my excavation company with no trucks. You need to go find trucks from somewhere else. Uh-huh. And then you have days that you don't get any orders, and so now my excavation company holds the bag and gets 100 trucks sent to it. <laughs> yeah. How often does that happen, though? Oh, it happens sometimes, especially on, uh, uh, on union holidays or union RDOs. They have a RDO day every two weeks where they don't work. Every two weeks? One day off every two weeks, yep. What? Yes. Yes, sir. Loud and proud. How does that work? I don't know. It, they just have one day off every two weeks. So they have a three-day weekend that's every it. other week? Yes. What? I know, right? And that's just a union thing? Yeah, that's our union thing. Can't say much about that. Love the union. <laughs> yeah. And my jobs are all OSHA approved and very safe. But we have some huge number of days. Like on one job, we moved 12,000 meters in a day. All on road. On road. Where do, you, do you have to find places for all the dirt too? Oh, now we're talking, honey. Okay. So the, the triple dip happens. So you make money when you do a double dip. Yeah. Imagine doing the triple dip. You have the trucking company, you dig the hole, and you tender or bid a job. To put the dirt in. Mm. Ooh, you get it. So you're constantly bidding work that needs dirt. Needs dirt. Because dirt turns into a commodity when you have enough of it. But even if that project breaks even, mm -hmm. you're still getting rid of it without having to pay for it. Maybe closer. Yeah. Maybe closer. So you need to bid the right jobs in the right locations and make sure that you have import sites and export sites. And so... We really target it, and sometimes it works beautifully. You know, 50,000 metres in, 50,000 metres out, 10 minutes away from each other. Will you, will you ever bid an export site at cost and Below then make cost. a bunch more? Below cost. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll make all your money digging the hole. Or truck in the dirt. Or truck in the dirt. You don't have to make money on each specific part. You have to make money as a group. Huh. Like these podcasts with people like me on them would probably lose you money. Sure. But, but they're good for the brand, you see. Yes. If we do enough of them, it's okay to have you on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I drag the numbers down, but, <laughs> but uh, overall the numbers are going up. That's, that's the only reason we have you on today is to just really <laughs> leverage your internet cloud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of followers from Iran, so uh, yeah. they, they'll love to listen to this. So do I. Yeah. It's strange. It's one of my niche markets. Between, between you, me, and Missy, we probably have half the country <laughs> following us. <laughs> I don't understand how they follow, they like earth moving so much. But, yeah. I, but I look forward to going there one day and having people invite me into their home. Oh, you would be, you'd be a celebrity. Yeah, people would carry absolutely. you down the street. Kim Kardashian in the bin. <laughs> Jam Starbuck, ready to rock and roll. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're, we're happy to help. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so there's no desire to go outside of digging holes. Why would you want to do anything else than dig holes? That's a good point. Yeah, that's, that's where it's at. That's the ticket. That it is, you either have to do, I feel like there's the co companies that make money, that make good money, they yeah. either do one thing really well yeah. or they do absolutely everything. Absolutely. Like if, you, if you're on, in between, good luck trying it, to make it, money. It's very difficult. It's yeah. very difficult because you're still beholden to the top dog. Yeah. The guys who are doing everything, they are the top dog and they do uh, you've got heaps of companies that do all of the, everything. And then I just want the bulk earthwork. I don't even want to trim the ground if possible, but I have to. So, uh, but can, can, are there jobs where someone else does the finish work? Mm -hmm. so Every you, one of my jobs, someone so else does So you just do, you just, just move it yeah, and I then just, you just leave it. I want to leave it. I, if I could have jobs that were, were within 300 mil or a foot of grade, oof, now we're talking. Because you can just do it as quickly oh, as you possibly can. Oh, yeah, baby. Can. Yeah. 
I'm getting excited thinking about it. Do you run GPS <laughs> on your machines? Yes. Really? Yeah, so that I, because they don't let me do it within a foot. Yeah, 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 I have yeah, to do yeah. it within an inch, an which inch. is annoying. But um, the, the whole part of it is just picking up the dirt and moving it. You know, the, the trim work, and, and like you can hear, the boys have, a, you know, they get really under the pump some days and then other days we steal all of their trucks to supply because we, we got a couple of the major infrastructure jobs in my city. Talk about that. What are the level crossings? Level crossings are putting the road under the rail line or the rail line under the road. So There's 75 of them to do in my city. It's, so it's unobstructed. You can drive places without having to wait for trains. That's all it is. Yes. Yep. Because but the, the boom gates would be down the half of the peak period because a lot of people take the trains into the city to work. So, so just jam everything up. Jam everything up. Less, uh, the, for the economy, it's better to have that be unobstructed. So typically you're digging basements for mostly parking, right? Yes. But yep. these projects, if you're putting a road beneath a rail, yeah. you need a big hole to do that. Yeah, now we're talking. And then especially if uh, on the rail line, there's two or three within a mile or two miles, which means that we can remove all of them if we drop all of the rail, but two miles. Oh, uh, so you'll just drop the whole rail two, all the way through. All the way through. Sure. Yes. For two miles, 10 meters wide or 30 feet wide, I suppose, or eight meters deep. So that's where you'll have those videos of like an eight in the hole pushing. And mm-hmm. are you pushing to an excavator that's loading trucks? There's, and that is going on time and time again. Sometimes there's 10 esca- excavators in load points, 15 or 20 D8s in the hole. They're not all mine. Really? Yes. They are huge jobs. No shit. Yeah. So, and you have to move it as quickly as you can. Yeah. So like we, I think, uh, so they're not all mine. They're, they're not all my boys because no one can have enough boys to do that. 24-hour shifts, so uh, two 12 hours and, uh, you know, 500 people on site. Sometimes I've, I've only got 10 boys on. Sometimes I've got 50 or 60. You know, it was, really? it was years ago. Yeah, I had, I had some really decent ones. Wow. But, but like I think what was some of them? Some of the numbers we've been involved in is like uh, 30,000 um, 30, cubic meters exported in a shift, 40,000 cubic meters exported in a shift, like quarter million yards in a week. Are you able to find a place for all that dirt? Yeah. They, yeah other holes. <laughs> other holes. And they pile it up or they, you know, they take it to a place that, it, like a lot of them, they just pile it up. They have they take it to another tip site and just build a huge hill. Because really? yeah, because nowhere can take that volume of dirt yeah. that quickly. Like 150, 200 trucks on a on a haul that they're doing two loads an hour. So they'll just stockpile it somewhere and then use mm-hmm. it for projects down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh. but it really turns into a commodity at that at that volume. You're just paying a unit rate. Mm-hmm. So per just yard, per yard, per ton, per ton. That's it. Either one. Is it two separate contracts, the excavating and the trucking? Yes. Huh. So mm-hmm. are you always, sometimes are you using someone else's trucks? Yes. And someone, then sometimes and, you just have your trucks going. Up. And getting loaded by someone else. Do you ever have a problem with that with competitors? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lots. So will competitor deliberately not let you bid if, work? Yeah, well, like they they no. won't they won't let you use your trucks for example. Yes, they yeah. won't use the trucks. But what about if I have the best price? Sure. Mm-hmm. So there's not that much you can do about it, is there? And if you just I, drive by with a smile on your face. Well, sometimes a little smirk rather than a smile. <laughs> yeah. You know, just on the corner of my mouth, <laughs> because it's um it's difficult. It's a, it's a difficult line to tread, uh, especially like in the basement building. You know, uh, we'll bid a job and I can bid against the people who will use my trucks to uh, cart the dirt out. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, you're making money either way. I, I'm making money, but if you were my competitor or, in, or my customer sure. or client, it can be quite difficult, especially for the sales reps, uh, you know, like a, you bid job A that, from the excavation company that will package the whole thing together. And then the sales reps are for the trucking company. And so they're calling up the people who win the job asking to use our trucks. Mm. And this is our pricing. Mm. And then they're saying, well, you bid against us 
at the front end and now you're trying to win the work on the back end. Yeah. Mm, which can be quite difficult, especially yeah. for them. So the numbers are going, mm. going all around, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially because trucking is a, uh, about 70 to 80% of the, of the actual basement cost. Of is that the, right? Of the digging of the hole, yeah, 70 to 80% is in trucking. Oh, shit. So that's outside of the concrete or the retention, like to actually hold up the walls. Yeah. yeah. But as the digging component goes, 70 to 80%. Huh. So if then I truck for my competitor, you've, you've still taken 70% of the total. majority of the contract. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and the trucks are owner operator. Most of them, yeah. How many trucks do you own? Four. Why do you own four? Because employees are very difficult. And because the market's sort of been set that way from others. It wasn't set that way by me, but you've got to play the game that you're given. Sure. Because uh, it makes it difficult with the employees and uh, the holidays and the breakdowns and the capital investment. If you have 100 trucks going to work, each truck is worth, I don't know, let's say 200 grand, mm-hmm. you've got $20 million on the road. And the liability associated with that. And Correct. So you just pay them. Hourly. No, per load as well. I'll pay them per load? You, per load, per really? ton, per cube. You tell me how you want to pay it. And is, that, is that problematic sometimes? It can be incredibly problematic sometimes. How so? Well, when the job's running great, they make a shitload of money. But when the job's running shit, they make fuck all money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're going to e- edit that fuck no. all money out, no. but it can be true. We had, had Garrett Wilson on the podcast, don't worry. Oh, good. <laughs> So that, that's, the, that's the issue. And, and, of course, we never remember when we make great money. We remember when we made shit money, though. Yeah. So like, if they can make great money last week, but on Monday if they make shit, then they can go to one of my trucking competitors who might be paying better. Mm. And it's this ebb and flow. It's the tied in, tied out of these trucks that you have to try and keep on top of, which is difficult. Is dealing with the trucks that... I mean, it sounds like a pain in the ass. Is it that much of an advantage? Absolutely. So it's worth the trouble? It's more than worth the trouble. It's, it's a great business. It's uh, probably the better half of my business. But it, it, they support and help each other. Yeah. My trucking company has made my excavation company make so much more money on a job. Do other excavation companies do that as well? No. Really? No. Oh. So there's only one. So we're, you're the only guy playing the, in both yes in both markets there. Other the, the big big guys, the guys that do like huge government contracts, have a fleet of trucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, so they own everything and they own they own it. But as far as owner operators, which we call a plant hire company, like an agency mm-hmm. that uh, books and uh, uh, books in trucks, but then drops trucks at the same time, depending market demand, pays more. But like they've internalized everything, and we still keep it all outsourced. I don't know if we've mentioned this, but you're in Australia. Yes. If, <laughs> if people any. haven't picked up on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I do wonder why people don't do it over here. Um, they do. Because there's, there's a... So you bid the job as the excavation company, and let's say you allocate 10 to $15 per yard to take away the dirt. Mm-hmm. If you can get your client to pay that 10 to $15 per yard, and then take it around the corner to your own job where they're also paying $5 per yard to bring in the dirt yeah. and then pay the trucks $5 to take it there. You've just made $15 per yard. The way, the way I typically see it done is they'll just own the trucks. And so they'll move all the dirt themselves. Mm. But the reason why civil companies here don't like trucks is just the fucking liability. Yeah, because trucks are shit. Yeah. And, and they go, break down I mean, all the time. Well, you break down one, but God forbid you have a driver that goes and kills someone. Yeah, absolutely. And that's... A, an absolute mess pretty quick. Yeah, so we don't have that mess because we don't like, we're not a country that loves litigation like you. Like uh, Americans just love it. You'll we trip over it. on a sidewalk and well, try and sue yeah. someone. Well, that's, you got the ambience chasers. Mm. Their whole business is predicated on. Yeah. Hey, did you and, get hit by a truck? Yeah. Give well, me a call. <laughs> we'll get you a million dollars. Exactly. Mm, okay. And then, then you have these guys that like break into someone's house and trip over on something that you read about in the newspapers and then they try and sue the company that. Well, you better be oh, careful around here. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is an up and coming area. Well, no, really, no, no. I'm saying my office. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there, I saw some steep steps as I was walking yeah. up, and, uh, and I'm feeling a little bit hungover. Yeah. I could fall down. Yeah. And you bought the drinks last night too. You at least bought one round. So that we actually do have that problem uh, in a different way in Australia. So if they, if you have an employee that drives your car, yeah. they come to your office or your yard, and you give them beer. Then on the way home, they get pulled over and lose their license. Then you can't sack them. Really? Because hmm. hmm. it was your beer. My beer, I gave it to them. My car on work property. If you tick those boxes, then all and they lose their license, mm-hmm. you're on the hook for their for their wage. Hmm. Which means that I don't give anyone beer. How I, I don't either. Yeah. Hmm. Um. As Alex drinks a beer. <laughs> uh, it, it was outsourced uh, beer. He bought yeah, it himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that box not ticked. We're fine. We're uh-huh. all good. Yeah. Um, the trucks, they have your name on it, though. Yes. So do you just ask them, can you put Starbucks on the side of your box? or On the side of your box. That, I think that might have came out a little bit wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm, talking, um, I'm talking trucks. Oh, uh, we don't call them box. We, uh, uh, Bed. Yeah. Uh, so what? Yes and no. Sometimes they approach us and ask. Why? Why would they want your name on their truck? Because it's no good for Starbucks if there's 10 trucks parked in a yard with my name on it not going to work, is it? Hmm. So they go, they go to work. We also have some of the big government contracts. So um, we got a tunnel. So the biggest infrastructure project in my state ever is a tunnel, and we've got one of the two uh, contracts to haul the dirt out of that. So everything that comes, all the spoils from the tunneling process, you well, haul off. Yes, all of the civil work, but it's a freeway widening at the same time. It's two bridges, one tunnel, about 20 million ton. Why, why doesn't, and on a big job like that, you'll have a big civil company. Why do they hire you? Why don't they just do it themselves? Because of the capital investment of the trucks that you have to buy. So mm. it, it, even it, like if you're buying them brand new, which you would have to, they're $500,000 a truck. Yeah, we get orders some days for sixty trucks. That's a lot of that's a lot of muller. Sure. Yeah. Go so you're pickpocket. you're one of the bigger trucking players. In, oh, I suppose I'm getting up there. Yeah. In town. Yep. Is there still room to grow? Absolutely. There's always room to grow. I'm only in one state. Uh, well, one and a half. Let's say. Sure. You can go a little bit more. We've started bidding on some jobs in some different states. I can't say which ones because then my trucking competitors might get upset. But yeah, you can edit that one out too. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So we're looking to uh, diversify a little bit, but there's a absolutely massive job coming up to haul off road, uh, to haul on road of about 50 million ton in my state. Is it all just low bid? Uh, no. So it's a lot to do with safety. Really? So, yeah. So our, I don't know really? what you call them, DOT. Yeah. But, but we have one called the NHVR, which is the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator. Uh-huh. And the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator uh, has uh, put, in, put in force a thing called the chain of command, which means that the allocator that sends the truck out can be as liable as the truck driver. Really? Yes. Because you have allocators making these truck drivers push uh, over their fatigue, mm, take, take yeah, heavier yeah. loads. Yeah overload your truck, yeah. just make it down the road a little bit further. Sure. So they made them. Um, Especially if they're getting paid by the ton, huh? Exactly. And yeah. then the truck driver wants to break the laws. Yeah. And the allocator wants to get their job done. And so they, they put in force this chain of command. And so we actually got a third-party audit done. And so we've actually, one of the few companies that has the, uh, the, the NHVR tick of approval for employing subcontractors. So not actually owning the fleet, but putting in place the safety over the top of the fleet. So, how do you how do you regulate that though? When you have a hundred subcontractors uh, all have, in their own trucks, uh-huh. how do you how do you well, the same process guide their behavior? Yeah, the same process that you do if you own the truck. Exactly the same. You, you, you so don't what's have that, to. What's that process? You don't have to try and change the wheel. The wheel is what it is. It goes round in a circle. Mm-hmm. But what you have to try and do is, is just get the wheel on your car. So what you have to do is 
check the truck, have a safety girl, have, uh, you know, have safety meetings, safety briefings, you know, uh, induction processes on different jobs, bring them in, give them PPE, all of those sorts of things that you would do if you employed them. Like it's a relationship between you and the truck. Really? And, and they want to work for me and I want them to work for me. So together we can make it work. Because you can incentivize the safety because then if you're safer, you can get those bigger jobs, which means mm-hmm. more dirt for them to move, more, more money. money. More money. And on the government jobs, the government pays a, uh, a, a minimum. A minimum rate. There's a minimum government pay rate. For what? For trucks. So, really? So the big problem you brought up before about the loads and if they don't get enough loads, if the traffic shit, if the you know rain falls oh, from the sky, so they're guaranteed to make a minimum amount of money, correct. regardless of what happens that day. Regardless, and on top of that is the load rate. So minimum amount, load rate on top. Okay. When on other projects, there is no minimum. The minimum can be zero. Really, rock up to work, get sent home with no load, zero. So are you, or is the government paying you, or are you working for a bigger contractor? Yeah. So the bigger contractors are in. Uh, but Spain and China. Yeah. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. So who are those bigger contractors where you're at? John Holland, Oceana, CPB. Wow. So, so they're, yeah, the Chinese are starting to make their way around the world. Mm-hmm. We, have, we had a lot of Chinese. We had like the, we signed up what was called the Western Roads deal, I believe it was. Yeah. And uh, that they actually built the road, maintained the road. Yeah. For 20 years afterwards as well. Yeah, they finance it. They finance and it. And is it a toll road? And it wasn't a toll road, no. Hmm. But the government's obviously Gover- in the back end, sure. back end getting... The government will pay them off over yeah. a period of time. But then that deal went south because every they were putting contractors in, the lowest bid contractors in that weren't financially stable enough to complete the road, and two of them went broke. That's what they're doing in Africa right now, especially. They're developing all this infrastructure. They're paying for all of it. Yeah. They're doing it all themselves. And yep. then now... I'm, really, I'm I mean, really glad that Australia can be put in the same box as Africa well, with what we do with our roads it, and infrastructure. I mean, if, you smart. Can, if you control the infrastructure, you essentially control the economy. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So, and you, uh, Australia is like for like of uh, Africa at the minute or other third world countries with our COVID policies too, which... Oh, no, we don't really want to get into too much, well, but... I do. I oh, definitely do. want to get into oh, okay. that. Yeah. All right. Um, I've got some views. Yeah, yeah I'd love to uh, uh, criticize the Australian government. <laughs> but uh, gen- genuinely, because I feel like people need to understand what the hell's going on there. It's, it's Absolutely. fucking insane. But it's scary, yes. The, speaking of COVID past few years, I take it a lot of the basements used to dig for commercial or uh, residential. Has that work gone down? No. Really? Strange, isn't it? Where's the money coming from? I've got no idea. And I'm a smart man. How can you have a country that's locked down, that you can't get in and out of, yeah. there's no immigration, birth rates are going down, but yet we're building, we're building apartments faster than they can fill them, but they're still getting sold. And if you're in Victoria, in my state, you, there is not a chance in hell if you had the opportunity to move that you wouldn't. Mm. We were locked down for, you know, 18 months or whatever it was at certain degrees. We're still at a certain amount locked down now. You know, QR codes, uh, fucking well, masks, you name it. Yeah, yeah. But it, you, what also happened too was you left the country and if it would have been a few days later, you wouldn't have been able to leave. I wouldn't have been able to leave, correct. Because now we have so much COVID, but we're highest, one of the highest vaccination rates in the world. So, well, no, but, but so, so the, the work you were doing before has, yes. has picked up yes. or been steady and then you've been getting all this government work. Yes. Cause have they ramped up government spending over the past yes. two years to stimulate the economy? Yes. Essentially? Where does the money come from? It uh-huh. doesn't make any sense. And like I said, I'm a, I'm a bit of a smart guy, but it makes no sense about how you can have all of this how the economy can be going up and the inflation rates going because there's so much more money. Are they printing more? Are, are the banks giving more? Are they giving more to themselves? Or- well, that's, I, I, I have the pleasure of interacting with a lot of very wealthy people. Mm. All of them are kind of scratching their heads right now. Oh, they're, they're, all, they're all making more money than ever before. Yeah. So they're all like, this is pretty cool. But also 
This Did doesn't you just make... put me in the wealthy group club? Uh, like you're, uh, yeah, it's you're quasi getting yeah, there. You know, maybe one day we'll you're, get there. You're on the path. Uh, but but they're all so they're all like this is good, but also they're all scratching their yeah, heads like absolutely. I don't know this doesn't make sense to me, yeah, and it really doesn't, and yeah. it really doesn't. Like apartment buildings flying up fast up schools, you name it. Like you know these infrastructure works just pounding them. You know like uh, uh, they had there's three major projects in a row that are the biggest in in the state and the country's history in a row. Like they oh. come out and they go, this is one deal. It, you know, we'll just talk in, in the tons of dirt to move. 30 million ton, 50 million ton, 100 million ton. Wow. Where, do, where does that kind of, like, but the economy's dead. It, like, as far as restaurants are closed, you know. And like, you, I mean, we're two years in. And we're two years in. Yeah. But they're not building any fucking hospitals. So what sort of genius is running it? Because that, you know, build more schools, but don't build more hospitals, but shut us down because the health system's rooted. Doesn't make sense. And I'm no smart man. Was was Victoria the the hardest hit in Australia? Yeah, not the hardest hit by COVID. Hardest hit by yeah, COVID yeah. policies by, by yes. restrictions. By yeah. restrictions, yes. Because you got to ask what's worse: what's the, the prevention or the cure, or what what's actually the bad part? Are yeah. they making their own problem by these COVID restrictions? Worse than what if they just did nothing? Like I come to America and it's like I just came from Montana. You wouldn't even know that there's a problem well, at all. Montana for the past two years, I don't think anybody's told them there's COVID. Yeah, well, but would if it, whether you're in Nashville, Victoria, or Australia, yeah. if you weren't told that there was COVID, would there be? Well, what happened with with Australia? Because you said you said last night, Australia, best country in the world. It was. It was hundred percent. I told and, everyone to come here. And obviously, and obviously, this is all Jimmy Starbucks opinion. Yes. Yes, in my opinion, the best country in the world best up co- until two years ago. Up until two years ago. And mm-hmm. now it's, I mean, it, it, in, in a two-year period, completely reversed course yes. in your opinion. and it's gone to shit. And that's terribly, that's devastating. I'm, a, I'm very patriotic. I'm very proud to be Australian. Yeah. But I'm not as proud as I was. And that's sad. That's very sad. But it's not from COVID. It's from the policies surrounding COVID. Yeah. It's from shutting down everything. It's from destroying businesses. It's from taking successful, wealthy people that were in a different industry, the wrong industry, and click of the fingers and take all of their wealth and all of their work though, of what they've, what they've built their lives toward. You know, kids getting pulled out of the schools that they're in. You know, the school's being shut down. Like, you know, my daughter got kicked out of school for 60 days or 70 days of schooling time in her first year. For what? Can you, with the, with the government in Australia, how are these people elected? Are they elected? Yes. So, But it's the same here. If you're choosing from two different piles of shit, you're still choosing shit. Sure. Yeah. You know, there's, you, you can brand that if you want. But has, <laughs> has, uh, has there been, I mean, where are the Australian people are at? Like, what's the temperature? Well, at the start, at the start, everyone was so scared. Well, correct, yeah. But now they're but, closing everything back down. Yeah, and, and now we've got 30,000 cases a day. And what idiots do we look like when we were chasing zero? We chased zero for months and months. And, you know, our premier got up and gave you know, himself a huge pat on the back. Like, look, I've locked down everyone, curfews. You're not allowed to travel. You can't get out of your city without a permit. And there's a... Uh, like a toll station manned by police that'll pull you out of your car if you try and travel too far. But we got to zero. Six months later, you're at 30,000. Great job, dickhead. <laughs> you know, like, uh, so what was the point of it? You stole all the rights. You took all of their jobs. You took all of their money. Their kids can't go to school. The mental health is rooted. Yeah. And, and what did you get? Yeah. You kick the can down the road for six months, and now you have the exact same problem as if you didn't do all of that stuff anyway. What's it? What's it like while the the country is is largely shut down? Like if you were in restaurants, for example, you'd be fucked. Yes. Well, what's it been like with your business operating through the entire time? Better. I made more money. Well, as but, sad as it is to say, yeah, yeah, it's but, been difficult. You jump through hoops. Yeah. The same thing with you know like. Uh, masks in the office, QR codes at workstations, QR codes. Imagine you have to add a QR code in, in your lunch tea room. And if people went in there, you need to monitor it and you need to make sure that you log it just in case they interact with someone with COVID, which now every, everybody has COVID. 
Well, I thought it was funny when I came back into the United States a week ago, I had yeah. to get a COVID test. Yep. And I was in the United Arab Emirates where there were virtually no cases. It hadn't really caught up to them yet. And now it's going through the roof like yeah. it is everywhere. Uh, but I had to get a COVID test to get back into the United States. And everybody in the United States I knew had COVID. Had COVID. So it's like, what? What for? I don't, I know I'm, I'm in a place no that sense. doesn't have it. I'm going to a place where it's like, I had all of my meetings up until that, yeah. um, that trip. All of them were canceled because everybody, everybody was supposed to be meeting that entire week had COVID. But is that such a bad thing? Let's think about it. Uh, honestly, all of those people that you know, did they die? No. They, did they get sick for a week? Yes. Is that so bad? Probably not. Could you have had the meetings? Some of them might have been okay. Some of them might have been really well, sick. I was only I was only paranoid because uh, I had to go it, overseas. Be, I had to go overseas because you're not paranoid about <laughs> yeah. COVID. You're paranoid yeah. about the restrictions. Yeah, and that's yeah. what it came down to. You're not you're not worried about the disease, the virus. You're not worried about that. You're worried about getting shut down, locked down. I can't go see my mum. I can't go to a funeral. I can't go to a wedding of my friends because the risk is so bad. But what are you actually risking? Yeah. Because what, you're, what you've given up is your life, but just in a different way. You've given up all everything you have to be safe. Well, but is being safe worth that? Because and, you can get hit by a bus walking out of Buildwit's office. Yeah. Well, it's like, like, so that's, that's a big thing with the contracting world. And that's kind of where contracting is going in a lot of ways is the, the, oh, um, the, the, the concept of Sexy. Uh, safetyism and yes. how it's safety is by far the most important thing. Yes, absolutely. And I was, I was talking to someone about this the other day. I won't name by name because I don't want to. Like he has a big construction business that works for all these GCs that safety is very, very important. Ooh, the most it's, important. It's very important, but it's being elevated to a place where it's more important than anything else. The job. But that but that doesn't make any sense because yeah. if there's no job to do, there's nothing to be safe about. And so, so like agree. you're saying that's the absolute priority. It is. But no, no, no. The priority is to build shit and yeah, to make money. Dig a hole. Well, and if those things it, don't happen, safety, there, there's no, there's nothing to be safe about. So one of my really good friends, he worked on a uh, gas project on a place called Gorgon Island in Australia, and it was, uh, uh, pretty sure it was an LNG project or something, I don't know a lot about it, but uh, they work for Chevron, and Chevron's motto out there is, if you can't do it safe, don't do it. Mm -hmm. That was their motto. Yeah. Which meant that some of their jobs were that uh, they had to put in, I don't know if you call them the same, dynabolts, that you, you drill a hole in the concrete and then they spread out and you can attach things to them. Sure. So I don't know if you call them the same. 10,000 was the amount that they had to put in. He had to put in 10,000 permits to penetrate the concrete. Oh, shit. Different permits per hole. Yeah, there's just inherent risk in everything we do. Yeah. And you're trying to completely limit, which I've, I was just reading about the psychology of children, and there's been this big movement to protect kids as much as you can, as much as you can. And it's yeah. actually... Detrimental. Very detrimental to their development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, a kid has to play on their own, has to potentially endanger yeah. themselves Go to learn. Dirt, okay, you'll be all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we pull them out of school to protect them, but uh, from COVID. But what are we really doing to them? And what's the what's the greater good or greater bad or I don't know what it, how to say it. But you know, you pull these kids out. And you stunt their development and you, you know, they well, don't make friends. We assume they, we don't even know. Yeah. And then, know. and then I, let me tell you, I'm not a good homeschool teacher. I don't believe that. No, no, mate, I'm no good. You believe it? Cat, C-A-T. If you can't get it, that's it. In the bin. Well, you, you dig holes for a living. Yeah, so that's it. Dig holes. You picked a good, a good career for yeah, your yeah. mental acuity. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. I'm the stupid one. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> um, it, on the safety thing, I saw a safety slogan. It was uh, a big, big banner on the side of a fence. It says, we do safety here. Perfect. Like, don't you build stuff there? No, so, safety. So you, so you just do safety. Like, that's yeah, what you do no, there? That's, that's well, the big one. What does that actually mean? Yeah. What, how do you do safety? Well, I like <laughs> to describe it to people. So we've got like a 50-ton excavator, that, you know, reaches out 15 meters. It's big. It's green or yellow or whatever color it is. And But it can't work if you ain't got a six-inch tall flashing light on the top because if they can't see the 20-meter <laughs> tall machine, they're going to see a fucking flashing light. So is that what you guys have flashing lights on equipment? Uh, it's required? It's just, it, yes. You, it's not allowed on the site without a fire extinguisher. So I told my boys, so think about it this way. 
My boys aren't trained in fighting fires. I don't want them to be trained in fighting fires. What, I want a guy to run up to a burning machine, grab a fire <laughs> extinguisher off that's a million degrees like lava, put it in their hands, start spraying the fire to put it out. Yeah. I've got insurance. Let it fucking burn. Yeah. But no, I have to have fire extinguishers on the inside and the outside of machines. But, and then I, I can tell you stories about <clears throat> uh, like the trucks, trucks with emergency stops for hydraulics. So if the bed's going up and it's going to hit a bridge, someone can quickly run over and push the button. And so there's a button on the side of trucks that can one stop, of my, stop the truck. Yes. So are you going to run alongside the truck? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or, or on like a motorbike? Yeah, and slap yeah, it yeah, like yeah, like a, yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Like you take it, like just slap it. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, machines, uh, uh, you know, that have uh, uh, what, some of the things are so stupid. So I got kick, trucks kicked off of a job because it didn't have 360 degree view of the flashing light. So it was uh, obstructed by something yeah, on one the side. the exhaust. Yeah, uh-huh. the truck got kicked off. <laughs> they have to have, listen, you'll like this one, <clears throat> an emergency stop in the cab of the excavator right next to the key. Interesting. So that you can turn it off really quickly. And I say, yeah, it's called a fucking key. It's right there. Yeah. And the safety person says, <laughs> you must have the emergency stop inside the cab. So all of my machines have three or four emergency stops. Really? Two fire extinguishers. Crane valves, just in case the uh, hose bursts, which, and then the arm drops down, which you're not allowed to lift over anyone anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, yeah. It, I found that the safetyism, the word that you used, has turned into people making their jobs. It, it, because let's say if they come to a company like mine, I have good safety. Their job's redundant. Mm-hmm. You employed Starbucks, fine. We don't need our safety team. But if they continue to change these goalposts about different things. And <gasps> well, that's how uh, I've, I've found lawyers work that way. Mm. Not, the, not, not all lawyers. There's some very talented, like my dad's a lawyer. But a lot of lawyers, they have to find problems in agreements yes. because they have to justify why Absolutely. you're paying them their rate. Anyway. Because, because if there was no problems, there would be no lawyers. Correct. Yeah. But if there was no safety, you know, oh, we have a big thing about a side underrun protection. On trucks. So if you hit the side of the truck, you don't go underneath the wheels, you bounce off. And so all of my trucks have to have any gap filled with what's called side underrun protection. Really? Hmm. I thought the blinky lights thing was just you Australians trying to be cool because I think it's pretty cool. Thank you. I want a blinky light on my skateboard. Do you know what? I can help you get one. But so I probably take it to the next level because they do look cool and I do like it. But like, have you heard the left-hand audible turn, which is so that people standing on the side, when you turn on the left-hand indicator, which for us is the blind side, so mm-hmm. that's the passenger side, for you it would be a right-hand audible turn. It actually says, warning, warning, this vehicle is turning left. Warning, warning, this vehicle, and nonstop. Mm. And so that people who are now standing on the sidewalk with headphones in that can't fucking hear it anyway <laughs> are now warned that there's there's a truck turning left because somehow, some way, it's the trucker's responsibility to not have someone walk out and get ran over because really they're on the road, they're allowed to be on the road, but a pedestrian who's got their head in the clouds on Tinder or Facebook, you know. Probably watching Build It videos. Definitely not watching Build It videos <laughs> because they, they'd be bored and then they'd be looking at the traffic, you see. <laughs> Three points. Um. And I don't want to dog all safety people. There's some great, no, no, great no. safety in, people. In saying that, yeah. we have some of the greatest safety records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm talking about Which gets is, you your work. Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. It is, it's, it's it obviously very, very valuable. It's just, it's, there's it's, a lot of applications where it's, I, in my opinion, it's going too far. Or it, It's COVID restrictions. We're not saying that COVID doesn't exist and we're not saying that it's bad and we're not even saying yeah, that yeah, we shouldn't yeah, be yeah, to yeah. some degree making sure that we're trying not to have it be as bad as possible. But when you're two years later not allowed to live your life as you'd like, and, and, and just, hey, okay, there are risks here, and yeah. I'm going to assume those risks, yes. and me as an individual. Yes. Yeah. So I, I say it to people like this, where is the COVID course at university? We've got courses for event management. So we don't have any bloody events on at the moment, but we don't have a COVID course. Six-month intensive course just to treat upper respiratory tract infection, whatever it is, six months, and then send them out. 
you know, train them in the PPE, train them to run a ventilator, train them to know the signs and what you have to do, and then have that. Where, where's that course at university? We don't do that, but we shut down all of the businesses. We kick the kids out of school. You can't go to a funeral of someone you've known your whole life and want to pay your respects, but we don't have a course at university. I want to. I want to visit Australia, but it's no. Don't come. I can't. You can't come. I can't. I can't. Still can't come. You can't. Yeah, and I and I'll tell you. We talk. I'll tell you when you can, but you can't at the moment. It is. It it is amazing though, because it's going into it, and and a lot of people have talked about this. Australia, like you, kind of viewed Australia as on the same terms as the United States. Absolute better. It was better than the United States. But the best country on earth. And I mean, we're in two very different places right Uh now. And, and, and it's getting further apart, less yeah. rights, you know, like mandating booster shots, uh, $500,000 $500, fines for a company that employs someone unvaccinated. I didn't, I, I didn't know about that until mm. you brought that up, $500,000. Yep. $500,000 fine. So what the hell do you do? You yeah. know, how, how, how do you, you know, like you can't do anything there. And they're placing all of this risk on top of the business owners to, to promote their agenda, which means that they just change a, an OSHA law, which is what it is. They've actually changed OSHA law for well, and that's, COVID. that's what they were trying to do in the United States. They pushed it to OSHA. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's like OSHA, it's already a bunch of dudes that are pretty overworked in some back office yep. in D.C. And they're just like, come on. Like, we got enough going on here. Mm-hmm. We're trying to worry about some yeah, I've seen silica some of, dust. I've, yeah, I've, ooh, that silica dust. <laughs> well, yeah. watch, out, watch out for silica dust. Yeah, it's real bad. It's yeah. the new asbestos. It's big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big time. It's, it's big. big. Well, now that asbestos is gone. Well, well we've like, removed most of it shit. and buried it. <laughs> yeah. it. We've buried it in uh, government-approved landfills, though, of course. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And cleaned up all of that and got it out of the uh, eaves and the and the you know we had a big problem with the uh, insulation and stuff. So um, I guess Australia, you guys have all that hand railing over equipment too. Do you have to have hand rails on your machines? All of them, yes. Really? Mm-hmm. Even the small ones? Uh, anything over twelve ton, twelve ton and above. So your new John Deere excavators? Mm. See what I did there? Yeah, yeah I did. Do the they, Segway. Do they have hand rails? They do. Wow. Yep. Handrails and uh, reflective tape, just in, ca- in case you can't see the twenty-five ton machine. I I like seeing the mining machines because yeah. it'll be this massive, massive mining excavator, mm-hmm. the size of a three-story building, mm-hmm. Even and taller. it'll it'll have ten thousand dollars in reflective tape all well, over why? it, in all different shapes and sizes. Those and are the safety. It's people. like it's like mm-hmm. somebody went to art class. And then said, we need to do this to all our uh, machines. Yeah. They, they look pretty. Yeah, they someone nice. someone had a great idea, like putting stickers that make their skid steer look like a cow. Oh, uh-huh. just got yeah. you there. <laughs> Every, everybody's talking about it. They are. But, uh, but I, I agree. I, a lot of that stuff, it just doesn't make sense. So the, one of the jobs, um, if people know like the 336 or the 323 next-gen excavators, yeah. when you walk up, when you, you're, you're inside a, a little walkway that's about 450 mil high, 500 mil high, so one and a half, two feet. And then when you open up the back engine compartment, it actually blocks you from being able to fall over. So I got it and I tried to send it to a side and they said, no, you have to have handrails. And I said, well, I don't actually have to have handrails because you're, you're captured in a space. You're never within one meter of the, the OSHA laws. So you have to be within one meter of a two meter drop and yada, yada, yada. And then when you actually uh, get to the back, you open up a cabinet, which turns into a handrail. So we got handrails on the uh, 323 because obviously that makes sense. Nice. Yeah, that's what ended up happening. But it was an argument. We, we went around and spoke about it and it was just, uh, you know, it, it's like they just, it's just a flat handrails, everything. Double locking, quick hitches, everything. Right, some of them look pretty cool though. The handrails? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a... Like a sixty fifteen excavator with handrails all over it, and you're like, oh, that actually looks pretty beefy. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then the the fire suppression tanks Ooh, on the back, hot, bright yeah. red, now reflective tape all over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Fire suppression. Yep. So that the machine just burns itself down. That makes sense. Yeah, I think well, fire suppression makes sense, but it's very expensive. Well, the fire suppression works pretty well because mm, if there's does. a fire, the whole thing's flooded like that. Yeah, but the whole thing's also 
fuck like that. It, it, Correct. To, to, yeah, 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 like yeah. it's not on fire, but yeah. we've we've destroyed the whole machine. It's all covered in well, foam. And that, so there's been some faults on those things. And they blow up and there's nothing wrong with the machines. Yeah. Yeah. And so it ruins the machine yeah. <laughs> without with no any fire. kind of fire. <laughs> yeah, and you paid 50 grand to put the dogs on and then it blows up and then destroys your machine. Yeah, yeah it's a great idea. We were, uh, we went to a demolition <laughs> job in a, an airplane hangar yeah. in a, a major international airport. So it's this massive airplane hangar and they have 787s in there. So as big as it gets. And they were, they were removing all of the old fire sprinklers. So yep. it was these pipes, you know, probably six inches in diameter all the way across, all every which yep. way. So they had to remove all this stuff. But they couldn't use torches because if they, oh. if they had a torch of, and they have cameras everywhere, uh -huh. and if a spark fell onto the floor and a camera saw it, the whole place was filled with 10 feet of foam. In, in a minute. Yeah, so you kill 100 people in there, but, but don't worry. Well, and that's, what, are okay. that's what I was thinking. I was like, where the fuck do you go if the <laughs> place fills with foam over your like head? That, do, I, do I have to swim? <laughs> do, do I float up <laughs> on the top? So they had to remove it all with sawzalls. And so watching these guys with sawzalls, uh, the entire entire thing with just sawzalls. So are they like saber saws? We don't, we don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, like a battery-powered saw. Oh, kill yourself. I'd rather, <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a homeless man on the side of the street rather than do that. Um, what are you doing in America? Traveling and seeing friends because that's living. That's what, that's what I came for. You, you know, it came here to see you, and then uh, we'll do a podcast while we're here. Came to see the Sherbers. When saw Dane and Ryan from Rock Structures, good friends that I've met around from the years of traveling and expos sure. and stuff. But that's what living is. You don't just work and go home and go to bed and wake up and do more work. Is this the first time you've been out of the States? In two years. So, since, since Con Expo. So Con Expo, COVID started. Mm -hmm. if I, so 12 hours, if I had to change my flights and landed 12 hours earlier, um, I wouldn't have had to home quarantine. But I had to home quarantine after Con Expo for two weeks. No oh, leaving. Oh, that's And like right. knocks on the doors from police. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Starbuck. Is anyone in with you? We, who? What's happening? Are you sick? While well, they're coming, fucking have their shit on their face. And you can't, and, and like, you can't go to the supermarket, but you can go out for, you know, 30 minutes of exercise in a day, but only exercise by yourself. And like the, the people who are making these laws must be retarded. <laughs> Honestly, honestly, they make no sense. You know, you, you can you know, wear your mask sitting down to your the table, take it off while you're eating, put it back on if you go to the toilet, take it off when you sit back down. Like, are you serious? So you, uh, I remember when you were at um, Con Expo, because I was with you yeah. the night before I left. Yeah. And that's when every, like, yeah, the whole yeah. world. The John Deere, the RDO equipment, that beautiful. Uh, yes. Uh, that, that was the last dealer. big social event. That's it. And remember, people were getting strange, and it was empty yeah, in there. And yeah, there was yeah. the there was the country singer. And like yeah. uh, I'm saying, like, there's got to be there's got to be some self responsibility for if you don't want to get sick, don't go out. Yeah. And if you're okay with that risk, then you can go. Well, that's what, I mean, what, that's where we're at. I think the That's United States, the United is, States is, but at home we're not, we're nowhere yeah. near it. We're we're nowhere near it, and it just comes from, you know, uh, I've got no idea how people, you know, like get, getting yelled at to wear a mask outside. You know, like what's wrong with people? Well, if I, it, I guess I'll be. Uh, I'm going to put my Australia trip and just put it on hold for on a little hold bit for right now. I yeah. want to get out there. The funny thing is, though, the funny thing about Australia is the place is locked up, but mining kills it. Mining, you 100%, wouldn't, you, would, you wouldn't know COVID's a thing because no. it's so essential to the Australian economy. Like, uh, yes, yeah, dig isn't holes. that funny? Yeah, isn't it so, that so you'll see holes. all the pictures out at uh, at the big mining, yeah, big Bill mines Burr and stuff. There's, yep. there's there's no COVID restrictions or anything. They're all flat out they're ramping up as far as and buying every every damn machine they can find and every machine that they can find and, yep. and i talked to some of the guys out there are there restrictions no because no. we're dude we're yeah like, isn't it funny we're too that, important here isn't it funny that when money is involved all of a sudden yeah covid don't exist no more it it's it, australia is it's very pointed because it, it, i know mining is flat out and in i the, and in the the infrastructure flat out yeah and infrastructure infrastructure yeah. is guns blazing you it's know like interesting um, you know, running as hard as you can do, like me, you know, 
They accelerated payments on jobs. They accelerated, you know, milestones on jobs. More resources, more people. Let's get this. Th- let's get this thing done. But yet, the guy who owns the restaurants at home crying to his wife because he's about to go broke and has to sell his house. Yeah. You know, and it, it's just the, the, it, there's an, an inequity there that doesn't make any sense because a thousand people on a work site is the same as a fucking thousand people eating dinner. Yeah. So let the guy serve dinner to make to make some money for his wife and kids. Like he, like some of these people work their lives to go broke from no fault of their own, and I think that's disgusting. Well, yeah, you can you can there's so there's the in business. It's like you want to think everything is 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 up to you. Mm. Like you really determine your destiny. Mm-hmm. But it's not really it's, the it's case. It's not. No. no, there's only so much you can do. But like you said, if you don't have that. That salt shaker with a little bit yeah, of luck. Yeah, yeah, a little like, bit of luck. It can, it can go, it can go with you, or yeah. it can, you can just be fucked like that. A hundred percent. And then, and then there's no one to save and the, you. And no, it's like, no. what do you do? Oh, I'm out of business. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm broke. Yeah. And what? And what? And what happened? And what did you do wrong? Yeah. Nothing. Like yeah. They, they used to, you know. I think we've had like six or seven like hard the snap lockdowns. Um, you know, uh, Thursday they they say you're open. Get ten cases. And then they'll lock you down on Friday morning. Yeah, and you and can't, then, as and, a business owner, you can't and, do anything. And these restaurants have spent 50 grand on food. Yeah. 50 grand on food for the weekend to feed people. And now they're locked down and everyone forgets. And then we're going to say, oh, do you know what we're doing? We're protecting ourselves. We're protecting our way of life. Hang on a second, fuck with. There's going to be no <laughs> restaurants open for your life. There's going to be no people, you know. <laughs> Uh, there's going to be no big sporting events. The Australian Open's going. The Grand Prix's not going to come. The MotoGP's left. We were the Australian, uh, well, we were one of the uh, sporting capitals of the globe. Aren't they having the Australian Open? They're having it at the moment. Like, fuck, they're going to have it after we kicked that uh, kicked out Novak Djokovic because yeah. everyone's sitting there saying, oh, you know, like, rules of rules. That's ridiculous. Well, it's bad for tennis players, but it's good for guys to dig holes right now. Absolutely. So if you're, but if you're a, if you're a jab, but then we have a, a positive case playing tennis, but we don't let a negative guy who hasn't had a jab come into our country. We kick, the ministers kicked him out, but we will let a positive player play, but a negative unjab player has to get sent home. I'm sorry, but that's dumb. <laughs> when you place it like that, that's dumb. It makes no sense. And when now we have 30,000 cases a day. 40, but 50, who knows how many cases we actually have because now they're doing those tests that no dickhead can find the test. People waiting in line six hours to get a PCR test to tell, to tell them that they're sick. No shit. You know you're sick. You've got a snotty nose. Blow it. Well, worst case, worst case scenario, you used to get stuck in the United States. I know, right? I've actually, we've, uh, so I've thought about what I need to do about it. I'll, I'll country hop until I get close to home that has low... Uh, so right now they do that red zone, yellow zone, black bullshit about how many cases you have, which everyone's got it anyway, so who Every, cares? It's blowing up everywhere now. It's blowing up everywhere, so yeah. who cares? Right, you're going to get it. If you don't want to get it, stay at home, put a mask on while you're sitting at home watching television, and then don't go out. Okay. Order Uber Eats. And if you're okay with it, go out. There's got to be some responsibility somewhere for, for, you know, for what we've got. So... Mm-hmm. Well, but then I'll country hop on the way home until I get to a yellow country. And then from the yellow country, I should be able to get back in. But, it, it, but I really wanted to come. Is the United it, States not a yellow country? Uh, no, you're an orange. Oh, we're orange. Yeah, but who the fuck came up with that? That's dumb too. <laughs> oh, honestly, honestly. Like, like factoring in mm. countries like we were green because we had no cases. Well, now we're fucked. We're black. Great job. Just scrap the whole thing all together. And if you want to travel and maybe get sick, travel. And if you don't want to get sick, stay at home locked in a basement. Check. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. I bet we'd actually talk about digging holes. Jimmy or Starbuck, t- everybody. We talked a little bit about dirt. A little bit. Clearly you're passionate. About holes or no, everything? Everything. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> when you're talking about something, pedal down. That's it. So we're done now. Thanks for stopping by. No problem. All the way from Australia. Yeah, it was just a quick round the corner trip. Jumped in a cab, made it here. (laughs) 